Welcome back to Opa Podcast, episode 77. Today is just a partial crew again with Soup. Hello. Wyatt. Oh, that's me. And myself, Jason O. Uh, Griffin is out for tonight. He is a busy man, so all respect to him. But um, if he can, he's going to try to get us some notes if able to. But if not, that's okay. But to go from there, gentlemen, our Golden Gophers who got a bowl spot thanks to um, having good academics, as as we all know what PJ harps upon in his program, uh, despite only winning five and seven. We got into, as predicted, the um, Quick Lane Bowl in Detroit, Michigan. Um, I think this is the third time, uh, yeah, third time in the last 10 years. And I think someone made a comment um, on Twitter or somewhere like this is like the Gophers' second home at this point in terms of bowl season. <laughs> I was gonna say, you mean the Gopher Bowl? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I love it there because I'm a because I'm a huge NFL fan, so it's at Ford Field, which is sick. So, um, I, I kind of get more excited about it for that reason when we would go when mm-hmm. I was in bands. But no, uh, I should get it. I, I still, I still mention to people like, "Hey, you're better off not sitting outside at Yankee Stadium in the cold in New York, or sitting out in the cooler uh, of the of, of a baseball stadium over in Arizona, with with, with the Phoenix Bowl or the yeah, what, which last that's year. funny because like the they use some like stuff in the in the in their contract to like get around having to pick the gophers again basically which was really funny it was yeah but hey indoor field it's heated is actually a, the lion stadium is actually pretty good as well yeah. so you know it's a fun game like cuz cuz you're in an NFL stadium so it's like a fun viewing experience and that's like kind of what the point of the bowl game is mm mm-hmm. mhm so I don't know. I'm excited. It's we get another game. That's 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 the good part, right? Like we get to we get to see what happens here. They basically have nothing to lose. Like they truly truly have never had less to lose. No, honestly. Yeah. Um to get into it actually. So our our opponent for the Quick Lane Bowl um will be taking place on December 26th, day after Christmas. Will be against the seven and five Bowling Green um, Falcons. I might might have butchered that. There's some sort of bird. I, yeah, I think Falcons is right. But yeah, Bowling Green um, hashtag revenge game. Uh, still have memories of that 2021 game, but I digress. Um, Bowling Green. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bowling Green comes in seven and five overall, as I mentioned. They're they went five and three in the Mac East, um, finishing third over there. Um from what I could research about Bowling Green, um I'm not sure if it's just because they're a Mac program and it's hard to find that kind of information, but I don't have much information if they're being hit badly at all or anything of sort with the transfer portal as what we've been seeing from our gophers so i can't say if they're if we're not expecting players to play on their end but from what i have seen um they've been on a two they've been running with two quarterbacks this season fun great um and soup you mentioned it off air and i'll mention it now their defense is actually pretty good um well, it's very efficient. Like mm-hmm. looking at the the stats on game on paper, they're like tw- in the top twenty in EPA total, and they're in the top like thirty for basically four or five major categories. Like it's EPA per play, EPA per, EPA per game, and uh, plays per game. So like they play really good defense. I think they're first in the FBS in turnovers as well. Yep. And then uh, going into the last five games of this season, um, they went four and five, uh, winning against a- Akron, Ball State, Kent State, and Western Michigan, uh, PJ's former uh, stop. But um, 
that is kind of skewed because their one loss was a close game against Toledo, losing um, 32 to 31. And I think Toledo won the MAC last weekend as well, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. Yeah. So they were a solid team, and Bowling Green came into play and, you know, lost by one point. So uh, to go from there, ESPN has their matchup predict- predictors uh, leading towards the Gophers 60% compared to the 40% versus Bowling Green. And for the betting odds. Also, uh, Miami won the 2023 MAC. Oh, Miami, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. It was um, a big swingy game. That's why I checked. I was like, wait a minute. I think maybe it was Miami. I, yeah. I was like, is that Miami or Toledo bump? Could be remembering wrong, but thanks for confirming. Uh, but yeah. the betting odds for the game coming up here. Um, over under is at 36 and a half favoring the Gophers minus five and a half. It feels right. Yep. I mean, the Gophers should win this game and it like, shouldn't, it shouldn't be asking that much of them, I guess, you know, like 36 is like, is low. I get it. So but that's just that's sort of the way the Gophers play football, and it seems like it's yeah. the way that Bowling Green plays football as well. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do if like they use this to like get more reps to like, you know, your Darius Taylor if he's healthy, you know, like he's already burned the year of eligibility, you might as well play. Like, it, like, I think that's a good idea, honestly. Like, I think for me, um, and. I we I, I was seeing this on the film of the limited games. I saw a Bowling Green play on their highlights, plus what we saw in twenty twenty one, um, like when we the game that we lost, um, ten to fourteen that year, yeah. is that their defense is good, but also they can beat you in the trenches if you're not prepared for it or like ready to put up a yeah, fight. Yeah, they have athletes. They're not one of those MAC teams that doesn't have athletes. Yep. And that's the thing that I, I, I hope to God that Brian Callahan, our O-line coach, and PJ is, like, you know, harping on this O-line to, like, you know. Yeah, this is going to be the last scrimmage. game for, I think, a lot of, like, a lot of the older guys. So like, on the interior of the offensive line, I think Quinn Carroll maybe is the last game, too. So I think a lot of people are going to be playing. I think the offensive line will be ready. Like, But when they lose games, Jason, you're 100% right. That's That's how they lose them. Sorry, my mind blanked out for a moment. <laughs> um, besides that, uh, I think their second QB that they're like rotating around through the se- entire season has also been pretty, pretty okay as well. Like, I really don't know what to make. Like, they like to run the ball, but also pass when needed. So, like, like as Wyatt said, it's like very s- similar type of ball that the Gophers kind of run. <laughs> um which makes me feel no not feel but like feel like well, it's like the like the uh, like the uh, betting odds make sense as yeah like, absolutely very much. totally yeah i mean they actually have the defense though you know like so that's why it, that's why it works for them cuz it they executed on defense but looking into this game, I, I assume we're in unison that um, Cole Kramer will likely get the starting nod for this game. Totally, yeah. Yeah, I would I would assume it's, as much. It's like his thank you for being here for five years and being a great teammate the entire time. Like, it, it's a – obviously Cole didn't get, you know, a ton of playing time in his time with the Gophers, but, like – yeah, you want to send off a guy who's just been a good sport and, you know, has stepped up when he's needed to and, you know, done what has been asked of him. You want to send him off in a in a positive way. And, like, sitting in behind a walk-on freshman in, a, in his last game, just, it wouldn't feel right. Yeah, that'd be weird. And that's not to say that the walk-on freshman is just, like, completely lacking in talent, because I don't know that. I mean, he's like a scout team body. 
Yeah, like most likely, yeah. Yeah, right. Just, like that, that's that's the go, purpose when you're this far down you, the depth chart. If you don't, you don't go get a Max Brosmer if you mm, think yeah. that this guy's gonna be, you know, the guy. He's not supposed to be. He's a preferred walk on. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's okay. Like everybody has a role on the team, and like that's a it's a valuable role. Those, like. It is very valuable for them to have this depth and like an emergency quarterback on their roster, yeah. you know. And you know, maybe maybe we're wrong about this guy, and he does end up playing, and he does end up doing okay. But like, doesn't matter. You still start Cole this game. Yeah, yeah, none of that, yeah, none of, none of it matters. Cole's Cole's gonna start. It'll be interesting to see. I think everybody's just more interested to see like how they play on offense you know i agree um because it's, it's gonna feel necessarily different from how it has this season at just just because you don't have eighth and under center but sure but but i could also ahead. see though guys that i mean the offense could really stay the same because we all know who pj is he likes to run the damn ball and if Darius Taylor is healthy, healthy scratch for the game, and he's in. And then Jordan Newbin is your number two because Zach Evans transferred, uh, went into the portal. I won't be surprised if this is a game where like they let Darius and Jordan be runaway locomotives and just have Cole be game manager and give him like, – and what I hope is for Greg, Greg Harbo's side, easy completions because like – Obviously, I don't think Cole has the arm to sling it um, if, if if it needs to come to that point. But at least if he can be efficient, get Brevin in it with the tight ends. Yeah, I think this is a big Brevin game. I think you have to really utilize him here. And that's what killed um, looking at the, the, the one loss of the last five games uh, against Toledo. Bowling Green kind of got bit by, like, you know, like the – the last, the last guy, the, the fallback, um, either be the running back or the tight end. Your check down, yeah. Yeah, your check down, my bad. I did, I forgot the term. But yeah, yeah, like that's how Toledo kind of went after um, Rolling Green. And then also Cole, as I, th- I think as far as I remember, he was a dual threat when he came out of Eden Prairie. He's run the Wildcat for them. Yeah, so like if he can u- make plays with his legs too, I think that could be more advantageous. And he's a bit more stockier frame yeah. compared to Ethan. I mean, the big mystery of the season is what if he doesn't throw that pick, right, at North Carolina and they actually hit that play. He doesn't leave that ball short, you know? Yeah. Like, what happens? Yeah, like, we we would never know, but... We never really saw Cole Kramer. And that's the interesting part of the game, right? So either we expect... Yeah. But either we'll expect, you know, Cole to... Be all right. Lead us to the win, and you know he'll be. Yeah, he's a he's a perfectly competent quarterback. Yeah, but outside of that, um, on everything else on offense. So right now, as far as we know, um, no transfers, um, uh, or no one entering no the new portal. ones. No new ones. Besides the big news with the two quarterbacks last week or two. Um, so I'm I'm also expecting the wide receiver core to be all be there same with the tight yeah. end so pj pj what's it called uh pj you have to give him uh credit for like retaining the guys that he's retained at this point right like we know about darius taylor we know about daniel jackson we know about justin wally all coming back right like those that's big right now so yeah like it's it matters. That stuff matters, and like PJ was always brought in because of his ability to recruit, and I think that's going to pay off in like this NIL era. I think it's going to be bumpy, but I think like you see, he's doing a good job of like retaining these players through this NIL disadvantage that Minnesota has. So, yeah, I was going to say it's going to be bumpy just on account of the fact that I don't know if Minnesota has the money to throw around at other schools too. Yeah. And, but, you know, it, it's about retaining as much as it is about, you know, going out and getting guys in the portal. Which they've done and, we, and we'll touch on, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to go further, um, 
if you guys are okay to move on to the defensive side, like from what we can tell in terms of like starters um, and guys who got in significant playing time this past season uh, or this current season, um, no transfers or no names in the portal prior to the bowl game. Um, so well, I'm as far as I've heard. Yeah. So I'm very excited on what Joe Rossi can do with like several weeks to game plan this Bowling Green offense and get, you know, the reps needed for the young guys because, you know, we, I, what I could, ex I can't see and expect probably Tyler Newbin may sit out. Yeah. I would, I would, I would not fault him at all. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't fault him for sitting out and yet I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him play either. No, yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah, like, that's like, that's one that I'm like, it could like either way would not surprise me. So, like he's done everything for this program, and there's no way to fault him for saying, "This is a you know, it's a five and seven team going to a bowl game that's like not super meaningful, and I have you know high draft pick." potential i'm gonna sit this one out and no one can fault him for that here because of how much he's given to the program but at, in the same breath i him doing well in the nfl will benefit the program even more too yeah oh for sure and like in the same breath i would be completely unfazed to see him say yeah i value my time with this program so much and i value every minute i get to play for this i think program. he wants to and go out I'm with a win right to... yeah so I would it just it wouldn't surprise me even a little bit if he were on the field playing in this game. I mean, if he does play, he could if he racks up another interception or more, he could solidify his um interception stat um that he now that he broke for the U. Yeah, pull away a little bit. Yeah. But no, yeah, I, I agree with both of you guys. I, I won't be surprised if he sits out or not. But like he he's done a lot for this program and you know, I very appreciative of what he has done. You see Winfield's pick this yes. weekend? It was amazing. He's really good, huh? Yeah. So I think Tyler with a good combine will fall into that like top fifty somewhere. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. He's earned it. He has indeed earned it, especially coming, uh, especially when he could have left last year and came back for this year. Yeah. And that's another reason that I'm like, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him suit up and take the field. Yeah. It's just like he's he's been all in on this program since day one. And to finish the job, right? To be, I'd, I'd, I'd almost be more surprised to see him sit out. I mean, I think I'd be like 49% surprised, 51 surprised. Like, you know what no, I mean? Like I think that I'd be that I'd be like in shock. I just I think that I would be more surprised to see him sit out than to see him. It's going to be very play, easy to get behind whatever decision is made. Yeah, no, it makes sense either way, and I don't fault him either way. And you know, obviously, we wish him the best either way, because he's he's given so much to this program, and he's just like he's the guy. But I know we love Tyler Newman, but we got to check out the other guys on the defense as well. Um, as far as we can probably predict and expect, Cody Lindenberg and Maverick should be back as well in the linebacking yeah. core. This will be the healthiest the defense has been in a while, and I think that is going to be an important detail. Oh, absolutely important because I think we've, the linebackers especially have been struggling, um, especially the second half of the year with injuries, you know and Maverick and Cody being your signal callers on the uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So I think that's going to be very crucial, getting guys set up. Um, but also, uh, hopefully, that they're practicing it, uh, making sure they can make those tackles too, because that's how we also lose games is when our linebackers Yeah, hopefully they don't come out of the tunnel like greased up like they usually do. I mean, this is your opportunity to go get some extra reps for – for free, very for nothing, for very free. Board. Yeah, for very free. You get to go get these guys some extra reps, and you know that's good. Like this is this is 
the group that it's probably the most useful for is the linebacking core. Because, you know, that's the group where all your guys are returning next year. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cody's coming back. All, or at least all the, all the, all the like starters will yeah. be back next year. No. Yeah. I think this is the most, most healthy the team in general has been in a long time. So like, like they've kind of been plagued by injuries all year at like different positions, you know? Yeah. Everywhere except for like, I don't know, defensive line maybe didn't yeah. have that many. And that's, you know, another big point for this game is, like, you know, how we need to see them get back to getting penetration like they were at the beginning of the year. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with the defensive line in this game. Because, yeah. like, you know, you've got some seniors in that group that we don't... Like, Ja, ja Joyner on Mac tackles, let's go. Getting held? <laughs> yeah, I mean, can they please draw the flag? <laughs> that's fine. Like he's he's gonna dominate, and that's okay. That's Good what friend. matters. Because you think about it, we're probably what go get either ACC, Big Twelve, or SEC refs, probably, or Pac twelve. I don't know who. Uh, the for the bowl game because usually they have different referees, right? Um, I don't know. I don't care about that at all. But you never yeah, know. I don't. I try not to think about the. <laughs> they're gonna be bad. Now, they're but... gonna be bad no matter what. Like, who cares what conference they're from? <laughs> you right. You right. <laughs> no, but you I... watched like the Monday night game or whatever it was. The no, the Sunday night game, right? Yeah, the last like minute. Yeah, where the officials got li- literally every call wrong in the last minute. Patrick Mahomes, Matt Nagy, welcome to Lambeau Field. <laughs> The only place where the refs are against you. <laughs> but we digress. But uh, back to the D line. Like I really hope. Uh, I'm not. I don't care what's the scheme or what the game plan. But I just want to see an aggressive unit just dominate at their portion of the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And you know, maybe Jaw Joiner gets a couple sacks. Maybe I don't know. But um, if he can get one, we'll be happy. Or he he I'd, like to, or I'd he, like to see him share the love. Or bit, or honestly. he gets the pressure to allow the uh, the interior or his other defensive end to take the sack as well. We we I'll, we take those. I'll do two on on defense. I guess I'll do one in case Tyler plays. One in case he doesn't. If he does, touchdown. Um, if he doesn't, give me Kyler Boss strip sack. He returns Ooh. it for a touchdown. No, just just Kyler Kyler Boss strip sack. All right, I do. Like I that. feel like that's specific enough. I just you know if Tyler plays, I want. I'd love this game to end in the hands of Tyler Newbin. I'd yeah, like love a, to see a like game a backbreaker. Like, like I don't even care if he scores on it, if he can seal the game with a pick. That's just like the right way to send that young man off. Oh, for sure. So we're calling it now. So if Tyler plays, why it's calling? If Tyler plays, he's getting a pick. Yeah, that's just, that's where I'm at. And then Soup, he gets the pick six. Any any sort of defensive touchdown for Tyler. All right. Oh yeah, yes, a fumble recovery would be cool too. Or if Tyler doesn't play, Kyle Ball strip sack. Yes. All right. I'm oh I have to say one I think he 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 is due Justin Wally INT please <laughs> this, wouldn't that he, be something he had one big he had one pretty big one this year he did but I want I just want one more please <laughs> no no this is the perfect environment for him I agree that's a great one yeah but yeah I don't have much else to touch on the defense unless you guys got anything uh, I think we're just hoping to see better. But better fundamentals, right? Like we're, we we want to see just like back to the Joe Rossi, like limit the big plays. Like that's that's yeah what's missing. And I think like the consistency of the health on the roster has been a huge factor for that. So I expect them to be better. I'm not gonna say good yet, but I expect them to be better. 
Yep. All right, all right. And then lastly, um, we have to touch on it. Uh, special teams. Anything to chat about that? <laughs> I mean, Dragon is going to make kicks, right? That's going to be fun to watch in indoors. So you know they they're going to kick they're going to kick anything they want. They can kick whatever they want. You let him go from seventy. Honestly, I want to see the I want to see warm ups, especially with yeah. an indoor yeah. stadium. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, I, Wyatt, you guys, I never wanted to say this to you, but before when I was at Monday Night Football before the game, I watched the Bears kicker uh, warm up with my buddy for a little bit, and he was kicking like sixty-five yarders, and I was like, "Oh, this is over! <laughs> like, this is done. We're, we're this is in the bag. We're gonna win. We're gonna kick so many field goals." And that's exactly what happened. Fact, and in fact, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> And he missed, he missed like that first one. And my buddy looked at me and raised his eyebrows. And I was like, don't worry. Wasn't that like the 30, 40 yarder that he missed? <laughs> yep. I was like, that's the first one he's missed all year. Don't worry. <laughs> he's fine. No, but I could be down for that. Dragon getting that 60, 65 yarder indoors. Yeah. So let me see Just it. Kick the living crap out of it, Dragon. And plus, remember, we're, he, we're, he's playing with NA, uh, NCAA. Uprights. He's gonna be one of those kickers at the combine with a fun bench, because <laughs> that's he's big. Yeah, six four two thirty. That is not a small dude. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, expecting Dragon to drag on things. Um, Mark Crawford indoors will actually also be interesting. Mark Crawford will certainly kick the ball. Yep, he'll do it. He will. He will do the thing. He'll do his job enough that like <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> hey, can we just give a quick shout out to a long snapper who's been with the program for a while and is one of the funniest looking dudes in college football, Brady Weeks. Oh, he's he's <laughs> gonna be gone after this year. Hey. Oh. Hey, he's a senior. He's forever immortalized though with that that his hands on like. His like look at his looking at uh Quentin Redding at the Northwestern game. That's like forever go for history. Man, shout out Brady Weeks. Yeah, it's just like nothing but nothing. Quietly but does his job and you know looks at Quentin Redding in just absolute disdain. <laughs> <laughs> like WTF <laughs> moments. Yeah. No, um, what I still remember about Brady Weeks though, and I think you guys might remember this. Too. Um, Brady Weeks was part of PJ's, I think, first or second recruiting class ever with the program. And if you guys remember, Brady Weeks was a two-star a- a- athlete because, like, we recruited him as a long snapper. So he was two, as he was a two-star athlete, and people were like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and hey, he has not. Been, he has not been an issue for what six five seasons yeah that's been like said it and forget it as a long snapper just has quietly done his job and what what more can you ask for um besides that i'm not, I'm not sure I, I really don't think you can ask for more from a long snapper which makes like me... if you don't hear about him, that's that's good. That is true, but um, but yeah, no, this is gonna be Brady Weeks' last game as long snapper. Um, going on from there, um, as far as we know, probably Corey Crooms and Quinton Redding will be in the punting in the punt and kick return game, which is likely. What's that? Thanks, my thanks. I hate it. <laughs> what is that? What are those words you said? More like fair you know, catch we, it or not? We, I was gonna. I was oh gonna say, no! I I know that one. <laughs> I know that one. Right. That's when we. That's when we steal the Iowa game. That's yes. the secret. The secret sauce. No, but honestly, I don't expect much on the return side. But can we actually get something, please? <laughs> much? Anything? Let Corey Crooms do it. Let Corey Crooms handle it. 
let I don't know, just let 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 someone take the ball forward. Like, yeah. co- but they hey, don't cover. Hey. They're like also, always trying to block the punt, which like I appreciate, but like you have playmakers on this team who like have special teams experience, mm-hmm. and you're just not using them, and it's like uh, okay. Like well, can- we we found out pretty in a pretty tragic fashion that uh, one of the guys who we thought had special team experience and could do something, can, in fact, cannot do that thing. Um, Sean so Tyler. Maybe we don't let him touch the ball. Sean Tyler, right? Yeah, Sean Tyler. Yeah. No, I'm I am I am fully talking about Sean Tyler. No, I think yeah, as Sue mentioned it, like, you know, we appreciate trying to block the punts, but like can we actually get decent protection for the return game? Cause like we saw some of those in twenty twenty two. Yeah. And then it was non existent this year, so like do something. Please. But that's all I got on special teams unless you guys got more. Nope. I don't think I don't think more needs to be said about that unit. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, alright. Um let's move on to predictions then. So I'm saying well, I said preseason the gophers win. So did you soup, so did Griffin. But Wyatt, you left yours blank, so you could you have the power to W That's or I, L. Here's here's the thing, I I didn't know for sure that a bowl game was coming. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I was all, I was almost right to leave it blank. <laughs> very very true, but uh, but when we get to you, you can you have the power to win yeah. or lose. So. Yeah, um, I can take either way. Ooh. I I mean, hey. If you go against Soup, you could get the tiebreaker with him for the overall. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, but then I got to predict a loss. I don't know about that. Yeah. But let's get into it. Um, I am taking the under in this game. And this game is going to be closer than I want it to be. But I'm saying the Gophers will win 20 to 14. We scored two touchdowns on the field goal in the first half, and then in the second half, PJ does classic PJ ball and does enough to get another field goal from Dragon. But yeah, 20 to 14. I think I'm going to go with like 27 to 13. What's that, 40? 27 to, 14. Yeah. 27 to 14. 27 to 13. That is 40 on the nose. I'll take the over. I think we get like two Darius Taylor touchdowns. They shut him down. How about we go with. I'm going to call this a 23 to 14 game. Fun. For cool. the Gophers. All right. I, I just I I'm not gonna pick against my boys on this one. I can't do it. You need you need the bowling game revenge game. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. We we do need this one. <laughs> <laughs> we do need this. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, uh, Griffin said W, um, which is all good. All right, all right. Um, and I forgot to note this game will be airing on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Uh, 1 p.m. Central kickoff, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you're planning to go to the game, please go ahead and uh, check out uh, the Gopher Sports website. I think they have their bowl game webpage stuff up already, along with, if you don't want to, probably check um, uh, SeatGeek, which is the uh, partner for Gopher Football if you're trying to buy third-party tickets. So, But yeah, uh, if you're planning to go to the game, have fun. But I am not. I'll be in Illinois visiting family. So I'll be here. I assume you're gonna be here too, Wyatt. I will be here. Yes, I will be. I will be home. All right. All right. Um, that wraps the Bowling Green versus the Golden Gophers Quick Lane Bowl preview. Uh, to go from there, let's touch on some stuff. So, boys, this past weekend, as we expected. As we predicted, 
as 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 we definitely predicted. Oh man, am I am I excited about that? That was quite the called shot. Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> the oh, the thing that I got wrong was I did put Alabama above Texas. No, no, but we I'm got not, there. We got there in the I'm end. I'm not too fussed about it. We got there in the end. But yeah, I'll take because I I called that shot to a lot of people. So oh my god, am I glad it paid off? Yeah. Because like, let's recap this then. Um, in the most recent poll on Sunday when they announced it, number one Michigan, number two Washington. As expected, those two teams. Uh, defeated uh, Iowa and or Oregon State. No, Oregon. Oregon. Remember when they said there weren't going to be two Big Ten teams in the playoff this year? <laughs> Which there is. Washington, happy early welcome to the Big Ten. Michael Penix is the quarterback. They're a Big Ten team. Yeah. All, all love for Michael Penix. Yeah, he's he's a beast. That's, he got Tom uh, Allen Heisman. Paid trophy contender he got so. tom allen paid 20 million dollar buyout let's go <laughs> that's also true <laughs> that's like all michael Penix. did you watch him that season he was crazy but i he digress was crazy um number three tejas Wait, tejas was it tejas they look pretty good yeah it is tejas they, they are pretty good i hope save your worthy is okay I um, is Texas back? I guess so. <laughs> Can we call Texas back now? There's like so many storylines for we we should finish the top four first. Yeah, let's finish the top four. And number four, Alabama beating Georgia Alabama. in the SEC championship. We're back. Roll Tide. <laughs> Whoever the, thought the Undertaker sitting up. <laughs> Nick Saban. You see, like, the Michigan reaction video to, like, in their, like, watch party, and they, like, announce that it's Alabama, not Florida State. And the room's just kind of quiet. No in the tri- shambles. Yeah. Congrats, Michigan, on getting number one. Here's uh, fresh off of breaking Georgia's 29 games in a row, Nick Saban. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> oh, like, who also gets probably... to be, like, the underdog. Go ahead. Alabama probably has to be the last team that Michigan wanted to see there. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely. Cause and like, I say that like knowing that Georgia could have been in the conversation. Well, I'm, Florida State, like, that's tough. No, I mean, that was our prediction, too, though. Like, it was either we agreed it was going to be an SEC program. So either Georgia was going to drop and stay in the top four, or Alabama gets in. And in this scenario, you know, yeah, Alabama I think we had Louisville in. winning though was the thing. Yeah, yeah, we, I did say yeah. that Louisville wins, but Lu- ideally, Louisville right? didn't win, but they did enough to they, make the committee question. For they this. won. They won the war. They didn't win the battle, but they won the war. Mm-hmm. They they didn't win, but FSU certainly lost. Because like. I think I was mentioning on the on our group chat um, during the weekend, like this game is way closer. And even, even I know we were talking, if, even if FSU won the game with this close of a margin, I don't think they get considered. And lo and behold, they didn't get no, in. Yeah, it, it, I mean, they they almost certainly got considered. They were still an undefeated Power Five team. Yeah, but they, they got they got jobbed. They they just like they got, that. Everybody agrees. But like the problem is, is that Texas had to get in, right? Yeah, that and made they, everything they were weird. never going to leave out an SEC team. Yeah, like, like just, maybe it wasn't going to happen. Texas maybe would settle them for a year, you know. But it's because Jordan Travis gets injured, like it is. Like if Jordan Travis was healthy, they would be number four. Alabama would be number five. Like, yeah. wasn't there? I believe when the in the committees. You know, in, in in consideration of the top four, wasn't there something if there was if there were missing key players that it would? Yes, that is more? a that is a big thing, or that is a thing that they highlighted in their considerations. 
or from their consideration. I mean, I think they got the four and... best teams. No, I agree. Like Michigan yeah. looked good. Washington's very good. Alabama looked good. Um, so she like after that loss to Texas earlier in the season, and then um, Texas as well getting in. So like, I mean, I don't even think you can call into question either of Michigan or Washington. Like, I don't think that anybody is saying anything about those two teams. Those are two undefeated power five, you know, conference champions. So it, like, we're not even, we're not even talking about those teams. Cause there's not, there's not injuries that really stood in their way. The resume is just there for those two teams. And then like, Florida State has every right to feel bad about this. Has every right to feel rage or disappointment, whatever you want to feel. Because, you know, an undefeated Power 5 conference champion should be in. Even without, yeah, like, feels like they should be in. Well, the BCS, the simulated BCS had them in. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think if Jordan Travis is there, they're probably the three. It, uh, it, I could see it. I could see it, I guess. And, like, Georgia drops to five, Alabama is it's or they go six, five, whatever. Right? Yeah. Sure. But. But also, if Jordan yeah. Travis did play and it was healthy, I don't think the game would have been that close. It's definitely not. Jordan Travis is a very, very good quarterback. Yeah, but but you know, also we're not having um, Jake, Travis is healthy, unfortunately. Yeah, but also then again, in that Louisville, the Louisville and FSU game, J- Jake Plummer was just pretty much handing them the game every time he threw the ball. Mm-hmm. Tough, yeah, it was. Yeah, but You know what's funny about it, though, is that it's kind of the ACC's fault because they formed an alliance with the Big Ten that delayed going to 12 teams for a year. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So it would have been this year. The top 12 this year would have been really fun. Top 12 this year would be very fun, and I think we'd be looking at potentially different rankings if they if we had a top 12. Yeah, I think it'd be shuffled up a little more. Like if we're if we're talking a twelve team playoff, does Florida State sneak into that top four? Totally. Because then the, you get, get to the see buy, either right? like they, that's, you get that's to see why. either Texas or Alabama play an extra game. Alabama does because they get the buy for being a Power Five conference champion who's undefeated. Yeah. In that yep. case, they just get the bye, and that's so easy. And then Alabama's five, Georgia's six, right? And that's it. And, gosh, who's even behind them in the rankings? Oregon's in there. It's Ohio State, Oregon, Ohio State's Missouri, Penn State, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma. Per the current rankings, right? Assuming that the season yep. ended, uh, what postseason was that? Is it 12 teams? Okay. That's that's the official ones. I'm just reading them off the website. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Yeah. Iowa at 17 is hilarious to me, but that's fine. Liberty over SMU is a travesty. Liberty gets the New Year's Six game over SMU, who's like way better. Whatever. Rip. Oh, Liberty's undefeated, are they not? Also, if I drop, it's because there is a cat in the danger zone around the power button. So. As a warning button. As a warning. Meow. If I cut out, like, I've been sniped, that's what happened. <laughs> you know how I solved that issue with my cats? Hmm. Put a coaster on top of the power button. <laughs> and somehow it worked. Dude, she, like, did it perfectly one time where she just, like, jumped up on me, scratched me, but just then jump up higher, and then jumped on top of my computer as I'm, like, grinding a, a, a dungeon in Baldur's Gate 3, and she just, like, perfectly jumps up there and hits the switch to power off my computer and lays down on top of it, and I'm like, are you serious? What a what a cat. I should probably, like, 
uh, I should try to get you a I should try to order you a 3D printed uh protector for that button. <laughs> yeah. It's still not as bad as SMU not getting the New Year's Six Bowl and Liberty getting it. Yeah, it's they did it just because Liberty's undefeated, correct? Exactly. Like that's yeah. that's pretty much the only logic there. They're specifically referencing the win over Jerry Kill in New Mexico State or whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. SMU is like way better. I don't know. To digress though, Jerry Kill's New Mexico State. Fun. Director of recruiting David Cobb. No, for real? Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah, but well, no, Jerry. Jerry's that doing is, good things that over is there. Pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, as long as he's healthy, he's a good coach. Yeah. And I think oh, I, like, I know we talked about. I think it was it earlier? No, la, it was last season because it was his first year and their first game opened up against us at our home opener. Like the media went ham over the beef, but like I think. I was like, you know what? It's not worth our time. <laughs> They're both just intense guys. They don't they don't care about it like that. It's fine. Yeah. But no, shout out to Jerry Kill doing some good things over there in New Mexico State. Um But then that makes me lead into this then. Who do you guys see going into the national championship game? I think you get uh Michigan Uh, Michigan and Bama. Ooh, boy. That's what I'm I was about pick, to say. I can't pick Michigan. I won't pick them. So I'd pick Bama and Washington. That'd be fun. I I absolutely am willing to pick Michigan, but it, at this time of year, I just I, – Michigan always seems to drop the ball right here. Right, in the, right at the – you know, right in January, they seem to, like, not perform. So I think Alabama will win that football game. No, I'm with you, Wyatt. And... Yeah, I it's... just won't pick Michigan. The other game is much more difficult for me to pick. Um, Washington's been so good this year. But, like, I don't know. Something about Texas just feels... And I think the best case scenario for the committee is that it's Alabama, Texas. Quite frankly, that, that would like make me cringe, honestly. Yeah, it's cringe already. I'd, I would, I would hate it. I'd, I'd much. I'd watch every Alabama. second, and I'd hate it. Let Let me be clear. I'd much prefer to see a Big Ten championship. That'd be I'd hilarious. much prefer to see Michigan, Washington. But you know, I if I had to predict it right now, it's Alabama, Texas. And I hate that that's even coming out of my mouth. It feels dirty. <laughs> it feels gross. I don't like the taste. But as long as Michigan yeah. loses, I'm happy to be honest. Yeah, I I, I think for me, then, then it's like bring it on. Yeah, I know. I think for me, Washington and Texas is a toss up, but I would still take like it was like if it's like fifty nine. No, 51, 49%. Like, I lean the 51 uh, on Washington. Um, and then I, what, I, what I wish is Michigan to win against Alabama, but knowing... Yeah, it's it's all villains in that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'll take Saban. But, uh, so I think my prediction is Washington versus Alabama. And then Alabama somehow wins another championship at the end of that one as well. Which I hate. Well, it's not Al Alabama somehow wins another championship. It's Alabama is a good football team and wins a championship in a group of very good football teams. True. They get hot. Anyone gets hot at the right time here, right? Like yep. I think. Um... Well, let's be cl let's be clear about who Alabama lost to. They lost to Texas, who, which is a good football team. They did. Washington's Washington's really gonna need to get to Quinn Ewers though. Like th that's gonna be key. Yeah, if I just you don't get to him. Texas can put up some points. Yeah. And that's not knocking Michael Penix. Michael Penix has been putting up some points, but Texas's 
feel different. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, which quarterback can you get to in that game? But all right, all right. Um, should we wrap it here, boys? NIL stuff. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, Let's talk oh, about some thank quarterbacks. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are too many quarterbacks to not talk about this. Transfer stuff. I know. So uh, I want to first touch on uh, Dicky Town Athletes. Um, that is the NIL collective for the University of Minnesota. And fortunately, some major they news um, came out uh, this past weekend and week. Uh, beside, uh, obviously, it started it started off rough with, you know, Ethan uh, Calic Manis and Drew uh, Viotto, uh, uh, Viotto uh, transferring uh, according to the portal. But a good chunk of players, particularly Darius Taylor, um, Ja Joyner, D-Jack, um, and many Wally. other players, and Wally um, committing for another year, at least another season with Dickey Town athletes and returning next season with the Golden Gophers. All these guys just go to the NFL next season. Yeah. but is what I think people don't understand. This is a way you get, like, guys who would be, like, fifth-round picks or later to stay an extra year and maybe be a third round or higher pick next year. This is how you do it. And I think yeah. it's just a new age of like now that NIL has is coming more like it, 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 the presence of it's increasing year to year and with with groups like Dickey Town athletes giving them the opportunity like it's the landscape because you noticed all those tweets all those players made when they announced uh they're returning next season they didn't tag go for football like they tag Tiki Town athletes, um, the the NIL yeah. collective. So, uh, I think that's on purpose, though. That's like, that's like for fans. You know what I mean? Like that's for fans on social media. Oh, definitely like marketing purposes, basically. But no, very exciting news. But I think the one that is that caught our attention the most is uh, grad transfer uh, Max Brosmer out of New Hampshire. Um, after his official visit with the Golden Gophers, has announced his int- uh, pledge to a uh, verbal pledge to um, commit to the Gophers, and is expected to sign on early signing day. Welcome to Minnesota, Max. Welcome to Minnesota. Happy to have you. It'll be fun. Hopefully, we can throw the ball around a little bit. Uh, he sure he sure liked to. I mean, he was the FCS passing leader for a reason. <laughs> He's like Walter Payton Award finalist, I think. Is that the Heisman version of the FCS? Yeah. I was going to say, the Walter Payton Award is the, like... Not the Man of the Year Award. Yeah, I was going to say, is it the Man of the Year? <laughs> no. No, different award, man. <laughs> oh, yes. The, the, college, the FCS one. Minnesota quarterback Max Brosmer, uh, the Walter Payton man of the year. Nice, nice. But no, that was the biggest news, and um, I know Soup was all watching a lot of his tape, and I saw a little bit of it. Um, and the dude does have an arm; he has a good zip to it. It looks way better on seven twenty than it did on like four eighty. <laughs> yeah, the poor resolution quality. <laughs> like the that's just for the arm talent. Like everything else was still there, which is nice. So, I mean, I think he throws the ball downfield well. I think he's a sneaky athlete. Um, I don't think they'll rely on him for any of that, though. Like, I think he'll be like a a guy you want to pull it once or twice a game, you know? But he runs the RPO well. He's not afraid to push the ball down the field. He's got a good arm. I think I'm just worried. Like, he's not the biggest guy physically, like, he's bigger than, like, a Tanner Morgan or something. He's not exactly, like, an Ethan-sized guy, and I just uh, I worry about those guys in the Big Ten sometimes. But he's You worry about Tanner Morgan-sized guys? But No, no, he's bigger. He's, like, he's significantly oh. bigger. But I'm saying he's not, like, Ethan's size. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So, like, those guys. Um, he's kind of, like, a tweener there, and... 
I think he'll put on some weight probably in the off season. He'll come out in in like a like the Gophers I haven't built up. He's a he's in his physical prime. Like I don't think that'll be an issue, but like it'll be interesting to see all that stuff, you know what I mean? But I think this is your starter moving forward. Even they also picked up another guy. They oh, did. did they? Yep. Yeah. I didn't even see that. Uh, let me pull that up. I I just saw it. Um. Doo -doo -doo. And then you got the kid, Drake Lindsay or whatever. Yep. The Arkansas the, kid. Yeah, the, uh, the high school kid. The high school um, prospect. Who said he's now? Who's assumedly the future of the program. Yeah, that's yep. nice, right? Because like, okay, this, they're getting bridge quarterbacks, like a guy with one year and then a guy with like two or three years and then this kid. And then if this kid's good, it's like he plays next year after redshirting for a year and then he plays for three years, hopefully. And then um, next guy up, next guy up, or you have another option that has a couple of years of eligibility. Where you can still figure things out and you have depth. Correct. And I do also want to chime in with some more um, stuff. The Gophers also has offers out um, to other, <clears throat> other transfer Transfers. prospects. So besides Thor Griffith, um, the Harvard DT defensive tackle, um, I'm, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I might butcher these names. Uh, Abdur Rahman Yassin, the wide receiver from Purdue, is in the portal. Uh, Justice Ellison, running back from Wake Forest, was also offered. Trent Howland, running back from Indiana. And then uh, Trell Harris, wide receiver, Kent State. Tyrell Henry, wide receiver, Michigan State. Ethan Robinson, cornerback out of Bucknell. And lastly, Will Shepard, wide receiver out of Vanderbilt. Um, yeah, so, I mean, all of that makes sense to me. Yeah. The room's going to look very different outside of, uh, what, Daniel Jackson, Elijah Spencer, and they have, like, a Lamecky Brockington. Yep. Yes. And then with the RV room as well, right now, if you think about it, in terms of scholarship guys it's just um dt Dar dt and jordan because zach evans transferred out and i think marquis i forgot his name marquise Bucky marquise early. transferred out there's another no, the other marquise yeah, the other marquise um that didn't get i just always think of bucky yeah, yeah sorry but yeah, the other marquise that transferred so like seeing running backs on this list doesn't surprise me either because sean tyler also graduates this year as well even though it's supposed to be that one year rental. <laughs> yeah, they're going after like high quality depth and hoping someone they recruited is like outperforming these people, right? Yeah, for sure. Yep. And then um, I will say, like, I'm not sure if it's surprising or I, I, I'm more like I'm more like perplexed a little bit that I'm surprised we didn't go after a tight end unless they're really confident in the guys that they got behind Brevin, like Nick Calero. I think they are. I think they are. Because like I will say, Nick Calero is a great blocking tight end. And he can I catch think that's too. what they ask, you know, and I think they, I think they're good at it. I think Callerup is a better receiver than he gets credit for. He is. Is is he not a senior though? I think he has one or two years left of eligibility, at least. That's a great question. I was gonna say he might have a year from the COVID eligibility thing. Probably. Let's just go with yes with this team. Yep. We just assume mm -hmm. that yeah they got they got that extra year so he should be fun. He will be, yeah. especially with with Brevin outdoor. Like you know, hopefully he's Brevin's up. going to the Senior Bowl. Brevin, have fun at the Senior Bowl. Have fun in the NFL. Along with Tyler Godspeed. Newbin to the Senior Godspeed, Bowl. Godspeed, young man. It's gonna be fun. I'm actually gonna like care about the Senior Bowl. Two guys who we like a whole lot in the Senior Bowl. I love like them. I'll actually watch it probably this year. Where the hell do you even watch the Senior Bowl? Internet. I think it's like on ESPN or something at this point. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> that seems that seems right. I think for me, I just like whoever gets combine invitations. I want. I just want to watch their portion from the combine, which is likely going to be Tyler Newbin, um, maybe Brevin, but I don't know. No, Brevin will go to the combine too. If he went to the, if he, he's getting a senior bowl invite, he's going to the combine. True. 
Very he'll true. be able to come by. But yeah, um, anything else from the NIL and transfer portal stuff that we might have missed? Have we talked about all these quarterbacks who are jumping ship? Or just the sky isn't falling. Like this is like people like look around, right? This is happening <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. This is like the way better quarterbacks are looking at the portal than Aiden Kelly Commandis. Like Ohio State's um Kyle McCord, yeah. yeah. Kyle McCord put his name in the transfer yeah, portal. Yeah, that was wild. DJ Um Okulele. Washington State guy put his name in. The Oklahoma um, guy. Oh yeah. Again, some of these guys are following people. Like obviously DJ's probably gonna be following. Well, who's uh, the guy his... who went in with like a don't talk to me? It's gotta be Taylor Gabriel, right? Oklahoma's guy. It's the guy who's going to Notre Dame, is it Riley Leonard? Oh, maybe, yeah. So Notre I Dame. I just assume it's Taylor Gabriel because I think that he's following his offensive coordinator. Because uh, Oklahoma's guy got hired somewhere. Yeah. And then um, Oregon State's head coach got hired for Michigan State's opening um, post Mel Tucker. So I'm, I won't be surprised if DJ. DJ's, DJ's probably going to end up at Michigan State. Which is which likely, is... yeah. I don't know. I don't project where any of this will end up. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, it's I, just I think crazy. there's an, uh, the other option is that DJ goes and plays with his brother at Oregon. Oh, true. Since Bo Nix is leaving. Which would be devastating for Michigan State, but but then again, is this pure chaos, and we love it. It's the new world college yeah. football. But cool, cool. Well, um, we'll... I mean, it's objectively a good thing, but there's like a lot of people out there getting really bad advice, and it sucks. Like, yeah, you had that that guy from like Syracuse recruit to. He'd go to Wisconsin, and then like the next morning, he woke up and he was like, "Oh, I'll go go through my agent from now on." And it's this guy; he's got like five thousand followers. If you go to him, he's like, "Yeah, I get." There's like his there's like emojis in his profile, like basketball, football, bag, plug, and it's like, dude, like be be for real. Like, <laughs> I know that Minnesota's law school has like a clinic for this kind of thing. They're no. very they're very strict about their compliance at the U. They've submitted I heard Ryan Burns talking about this on his podcast. They've submitted a bunch of other teams for tampering with their players outside of the transfer portal. Oh really? Yeah. And yeah, like with and that. like within it happens I mean, the guy enters to go to Notre Dame with like a do not contact me and then I, and he's getting like a million zillion dollars now to go play for Notre Dame. Like you know, Pete Pete Thamel or whatever is tweeting, Oh yeah, look out for Notre Dame in this one. Like it's like everybody knows. It's like so they don't do anything about it. It's so stupid. Which makes me think like this is like what I've been thinking on the side though. Cause you know how I I was interesting or and let me rephrase that. <laughs> I always thought if they really go proceed for it with how NIL and the transfer portal was set up. I, w- I was surprised they're not taking cues or policies and rules that the NFL has set up for free agency. Because I feel like this is what it is kind of these days, right? It's the college football version of free agency, <laughs> right? It, but is, or is it more complicated it, than it, what I'm thinking? It's like free agency without like good agents in place. Like they don't, they don't have you know, representation for a lot of these kids. Cause they're either making their own decisions or they're going through someone like that, that kid we just talked about who says he has quote unquote an agent. Well, there's also like legitimate ones out there. Who there are, good... there's definitely some legitimate stuff. And like I said, Minnesota's law school, it's is just like, like the wild setting west setting up a program to like help these kids make sound NIL decisions. Yeah, I think they take it very seriously with you. I think they go about it the right way, and I think it's very strict on the compliance, and that's okay. But I think that's not the norm right now, and that's yeah. No, it's definitely not. Like it's wild out there. I think wild west is a good way of putting it. I think people need to understand that that's kind of like the Gophers' approach when it comes to compliance. They are not getting in trouble for like any sort of cheating thing since like the basketball stuff. 
Yeah. Or if you're not like who was at LSU who put so much money and put so much NL money to that quarterback who didn't end up transferring there. <laughs> yeah, but that's you know and and like but the Gophers are never going to be that team and they know that and I think that's a good thing. Like I think they're smart with their approach. So you think this might be beneficial for programs like a Minnesota uh, or, uh, or in, in way? I mean, I think with a guy like PJ who's good at retaining talent like we've seen for so long. Like, he gets guys to stay within the program, not go to the NFL. That's before they're getting paid, right? Like, he's really good about getting these guys to stick around for a developmental program. And I think that is, you know, a big deal. Oh, Very yeah, true. it's critical. So I think people aren't, like, taking that aspect into account. It's like now they can also pay guys a, a little bit. Like, I think that's only going to help him retain talent and i think we just like like they clearly prioritize getting a quarterback who is ready to play who they want to start and getting and they're looking for playmakers in the wide receiver room because nobody could catch the football not named daniel jackson except for daniel jackson and even he sometimes struggled to catch the football that was one time it's fine i get it it hurts but yeah but yeah. The great Hannah Montana once said, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. But yeah, just a wild, wild west in college football. <laughs> but all right. Um, anything else? Because uh, we're over time. Unsurprising that we are over time on an episode where we discuss the college football playoffs. and the This football. week certainly deserved it. <laughs> certainly deserve, deserve it so. But yeah, yeah. Um, just to let anticipated that. Yeah. But just to <laughs> let our viewers and listeners know, um, this might be the last episode. We may do a recap of the bowl game. We shall see, depending on how holiday plans shake out. Um, but hopefully one more episode, fingers crossed, and then uh, we might hit a random episode during the off season between now until the summer. So if you ever you know, we if we have to talk about something, we'll post something then. But other than that, uh, this episode along with next episode will be the last of the season and then we'll be back officially for the 2024 um, Gopher football season till then so everyone thank you so much for listening and watching OPA podcast episode 77 and we will be off say bye Soup. bye Wyatt Oop. and Jason Oop. Oh.